Okay, so today we are departing from the Mass Science Building. Normally, on field trips, we would go down here and find a bus, but there's no bus. There's hardly anybody in the parking lot except for people who are working on the building. A little bit of an irony to that. They're working on a building that nobody is in. Okay, so our bus today is this right here. We're all gonna fit into this car, this 1954 Chevy 210 station wagon. So this is our bus for today. We're gonna now drive down to the Bolsa Chica wetland. Get the old car started here. A lot of activity here, but unfortunately it's not student activity. So we're going to leave the parking lot. And off we go. To Bolsa Chica. There's our little friend going with us. He's going to make sure everything, he's actually going to watch the car while we're at the wetland. So here we're at the Bolsa Chica wetland. Below me right here is a channelized area. This is basically human made. A set of uh, dikes that control water flow. This is the Warner Channel. And the Warner Channel prior to the construction in this area would flow into the wetland and the wetland kind of served as a filter that's what wetlands do they serve as filters they take all the toxic material that comes off the continents filters it through a biological community through the tules and through the communities there they absorb the toxics break them down and then the water would then discharge into the pacific ocean so topographically, this area was created by the Newport Inglewood Fault. The Newport Inglewood Fault is a fault that originates near Hollywood, California, transverses southward across the LA Basin, through Long Beach, down along Seal Beach, and becomes coastal around Sunset Beach, and then into Huntington Beach. After about midway through Huntington Beach, around the pier, the Newport and Inglewood Fault goes offshore. It then transverses along the coast, connects with the southern segment of the fault called the Rose Canyon Fault. It was once believed that the Rose Canyon Fault was actually a uh, extinct branch of the San Andreas Fault. Today we know that that fault is actually part of the Newport and Inglewood Fault and it's part of a very large tectonic system that has a probability of generating large earthquakes. And it did. The last earthquake that occurred along the Newport Inglewood Fault was to the south of us here. Right at the Newport Beach, Huntington Beach boundary, about 64th Street, Newport Beach, offshore, it generated a 6.7 magnitude quake. That quake shockwave, that seismic event, then traveled north through Huntington Beach, which at the time was mostly oil rigs, very small town, that Newport Inglewood Fault, which generated that quake, transmitted that shockwave to the north along this highway and eventually impacting Long Beach. That earthquake was a very significant event historically because it generated two pieces of legislation, the Field Act and the Riley Act. As it turns out, most of the schools in Long Beach were made out of red brick masonry. So there were red brick buildings. They were built because it was cheap construction and it was also fireproof or fire preventive. As it turns out though, red brick is the worst possible construction during an earthquake. So we'll get back to the earthquake here in a minute in the Long Beach Newport fault system. And uh, right now let's look at some of the geology here. So the hill in the background there 
is part of the Monterey Formation. So these are Monterey Formation sediments that have been folded upwards and were sitting on the northern edge of an anticline. So in Huntington Beach, there's oil. As we move to the north, so looking offshore here, this is the northernmost oil rig. After you go north, oil rigs, we don't find them. And the primary reason for that is that as you move north, the geology changes from an anticline fold to a syncline fold. And in um, Southern California, anticlines are structural traps where oil is found. So let's kind of move around to this area here. Just like class, we got people on cell phones. They just can't leave their cell phones alone. <laughs> people just can't live without, without the cell phone. Isn't that amazing? So as I'm walking through, this is actually a really nice day. It's too bad you guys aren't here to enjoy the field trip. That's one of the bad aspects of this whole doing things online now. Everything's got to be online. And it's just kind of a heartache in a lot of ways is that we plan all these field trips. The college experience of going out and seeing things, touching things, smelling the air is all being taken away because the video just doesn't do justice. What's neat is offshore right now, there are a large number of cargo ships. There's even a cruise ship sitting out there. The cruise ship is probably empty, can't go anywhere because of uh, most cruises have been canceled in lieu of the coronavirus. So as we look along the Pacific Coast Highway, nice straight coastline here. So this very linear coastline is was actually formed primarily because of the Newport Inglewood Fault Zone. So this is a strike slip fault. Shear is one of the major components. The two plates are sliding past one another. So this side is a plate that is moving to the north and west at a slower rate than the plate where the beach and the ocean is. So because of this differential movement, the fault has upfolded rocks into an anticline fold. And because there was a rock or set of, set of sedimentary strata that was enriched with hydrocarbons, so you need three things for oil. You need a source rock that's rich in hydrocarbons, organic material. Then you need some type of a structural trap, which is an anticline. And the third thing you need is a reservoir rock. And the reservoir rock, I'm walking on it. This basically is sandstone. So I'm walking on this sandstone rock here. And this is the rock, or is actually the reservoir. Interesting thing about this area is that during World War II, this is really part of the uh, Defense. So I like this little thing here. It says, hey kids, you know, during World War II, um, this is part of the coastal defense. So the west coast of the United States was vulnerable from attack from the Japanese who, you know, obviously had bombed Pearl Harbor on a sneak attack. So what was to stop them from? attacking the west coast of the United States. So as a result, the Bolsa Chica wetland, was, which was a, a gun club, the United States Navy saw a little bit better use of it as far as being a gun club, and they basically put in these guns, these artillery guns, and one of those guns was located right here. This is actually the pad where one of those very large guns was located. So Bolsa Chica, it's an interesting place. Uh, geologically, it's unique to California. We do not find expansive wetlands like this. This is a rare commodity in California. It's, impo it's important in natural ecological zone. 
but it's one that basically is now facing a tug of war between conservationists who want to conserve it, developers who would like to put cliff homes, homes right there on the edge there as far as they can get it, maybe fill it in, create some little uh, step topography here, human made of course, and so uh, every house would have a nice view of the ocean. Oil companies have a vested interest. They've been here for a long time extracting oil. There's still a lot of oil. There's some controversy right now, primarily, should we allow additional rigs to be put offshore? And when we get on our second part of our field trip, when we go down the coast highway here, I'll point out a tower that is actually drilling underneath the Pacific Coast Highway and offshore. So that's kind of one of the ways that they're getting around it is they're putting as many rigs right along the coast as they can because there's still a lot of oil in this area. And so there's a lot of opposition to that, a lot of pushback. But there's Long Beach. And now Long Beach, this is a huge basin that primarily sits on very soft sedimentary fill. Long Beach, the Newport Inglewood Fault goes right through Long Beach. Long Beach is extremely vulnerable to a large magnitude earthquake. Will Long Beach be impacted by a major earthquake? Definitely. Exactly when? That's hard to say. And this is one of the bad things about earthquake predictions. We cannot put a precise number, a date. We can't say that the next magnitude earthquake is going to occur within the next two years. That may occur. The earthquake could occur within two years, maybe 20 years, maybe 200 years. We know for sure that there are fault portions of the San Andreas Fault, the Newport Inglewood Fault, the San Jacinto Fault. There are segments of those faults that haven't moved in hundreds of years, and there's other segments that have moved. So Bolsa Chica, unique. So here's a good example of development. So these homes are right at the edge of the wetland here. And this fenced area is fenced off because this is an area of ecological concern, but it's also a region where there are a lot of Native American artifacts so in the area where the trees are and the palms, Native Americans would use this as a winter spot. They were seasonal people. They moved in lieu of food. Often they would go up into the Santa Ana Mountains and harvest acorns from oak trees. They would come down here and fish. So there's a lot of archaeological sites, and every time they do major development in this area, they seem like they're running into archaeological sites. Unfortunately, not a lot of it has been excavated. So the first human involvement in this region, in the Bolsa Chica wetlands, was Native Americans. And a lot of the artifacts are still buried. A lot of people would like to keep them buried, and others would like to do research. So this is the northern extent of the Bolsa Chica wetland. The wetland naturally did continue to the north. It now goes through Sunset Beach, a community that's very vulnerable to earthquakes, basically built on the soft sedimentary rocks, sandstone shell, and super saturated, so those buildings Underneath the foundations, they sit on sediments that are saturated with water. During earthquakes, that water comes up under hydrological pressure, a lot of pressure, force, enough force that it'll actually break through concrete. And once you destroy the foundation of a building, the rest of it collapses. So naturally, the wetland would have continued. It does continue into Seal Beach, the Naval Weapons Depository and all that naval base area. A lot of that is wetland, natural wetland habitat. It's been pretty well preserved because people haven't developed it. So that's kind of one of the good things about it. 
Our next segment is we're going to drive along the Newport Inglewood Fault. So we're now driving along the Pacific Coast Highway, nice straight section of road. Unlike most of the Pacific Coast Highway that winds and goes around hills, this area is virtually flat. And this is flat extended landscape because of the Newport Inglewood Fault. So as we drive down the PCH, we're heading south towards Huntington Beach Bear. You'll see a kind of a tall tower building. And that's actually a drilling rig that's drilling underneath the Pacific Coast Highway and out into the sediments that are offshore. This is their way of getting around of drilling offshore. So offshore drilling, a lot of controversy. There are some platforms out there see him here, we did see him for a minute there. We'll get a vantage point in a minute. But this little hill right here, this is the northern terminal point, basically. This is where the anticline basically terminates. Nice day out today. Not too many surfers because, gee, they closed the beach. Imagine that. Talk about social distance. Surfers have natural social distance. They always have. You don't get too close to somebody in a wave. You get your face punched in, so I don't know what to worry about social distance with surfers. Well, I hope you enjoyed the field trip. I'm gonna set up a thing on Canvas where you're able to write about the field trip and then submit it. So have a good day and stay safe.